Hello, everybody. My name is Markus Kraft. I'm the director of CARES, um, the Cambridge Research Lab here in Singapore. And it's a great pleasure that I can introduce uh, Kosha Berka, Fields Medalist from 2018, who kindly agreed to be part of this. Uh, let me just tell you in a few words um, uh, who Professor Berka is. Um, he was born in Iran. Uh, from Iran, he found his way to the United Kingdom, studied in Nottingham, um, where he then um, involved, got involved in the field of algebraic geometry. Uh, this is one branch of pure mathematics. And um, he's been working on Fano varieties. I had to look that up, what that is. Um, Algebraic geometry is a beautiful field. Um, it tries to bring structure um, into sets of equation um, that have geometry, a geometric, a geometric meaning. And um, uh, Professor Birka managed to do that, not only for two dimensions, but also for high dimensions. And um, uh, that was a, a breakthrough finding, which then earned him um, the Fields Medal. Um, so, I suppose, um, without further ado, we are now uh, moving on to uh, Professor Birka's um, research talk. Um, this talk has been pre-recorded, and after the talk, we will reconvene. You will have the chance to actually um, ask Professor Birka uh, in person about his mathematics, about Fano varieties, about parameterization and uh, the birational transform, all exciting stuff. Um, so I suggest off we go. I'll talk to you soon. Hello and welcome to this talk about uh, mathematics. Um, I will talk about mathematics from a quite general point of view, I don't go much into uh, small details about uh, mathematical technical detail, but just general uh, philosophical sides of, of doing mathematics and being a mathematician and how in general mathematics affects our life. So that's why I chose the title, Math is Life, Life is Math. And we will see during the, the talk that what I mean by this statement. Um, now, mathematics has played a really fundamental role in the evolution of civilization, in the way we live. It has affected almost every aspect of, of our life. And it is not restricted to only today, to 21st century. Mathematics was uh, already important to the ancient world. Uh, for example, uh, the Egyptians could not have built the pyramids if they didn't do if they didn't use mathematics in fact they build the pyramid in a very very precise way that's uh, incredibly precise for its time that's uh, older than 4500 uh, years uh, so they could not have done that without using some kind of mathematics which was uh, sophisticated for its own time um, now some of the earliest examples of writings are actually about taxes and if you have taxes then you always have um, uh, you always use mathematics because taxes are about numbers about uh, how many um, objects have been collected how much and so uh, not naturally mathematics get into the picture uh, on the other hand the greeks also loved uh, mathematics not just from a practical point of view, but also from a philosophical point of view. Um, they uh, recognized a connection between mathematics and music, for example, and uh, then it led them to the idea that mathematics should be somehow at the very base of understanding uh, the world. Uh, so at least philosophically speaking, uh, they uh, realized the importance of, uh, importance of, of mathematics. So mathematics is as old as civilization, really. Um, and if we get closer to our time, 
like 500 years ago or, or so when the scientific revolution happened um, and a few hundred years later when the industrial revolution uh, also happened all these were built on mathematics so mathematics entered the picture in a much more um, fundamental way even uh, compared to before uh, you could not really have such a scientific and industrial revolution without using uh, a lot of uh, mathematics. So mathematics is really at the basis of all this. Uh, but mathematics is even more relevant today in the 21st century because it, as I said, it, it affects almost every aspect of, uh, of our life. So if we look around us, um, nearly everything we see we can find traces of mathematics being used to create that thing. So for example, if you are watching this talk uh, through your computer or through your mobile phone, um, to build such an, a device, mathematics that have been developed over hundreds and thousands of years have been used to create such an object. Uh, so to, to create a computer, you need to make its hardware, its electronic, and that is already based on mathematics. And for, for, for such a computer to run, um, to be able to interact with humans, um, that also is basically based on mathematics. So mathematics is, is used a lot in making uh, everything that is smart that is using uh, computers, but also in, in other things, for example, to um, make a car, you need mathematics to build roads, to build houses, to um, really almost everything you need to use mathematics, even if it is elementary. But uh, the more sophisticated objects become, the more sophisticated and advanced mathematics you need uh, to use. Uh, so even if we don't notice mathematics, but it's being used to build objects, to run countries, and so on. Uh, mathematics is critical to science. For example, almost all the areas of science use mathematics. Uh, for example, physics, uh, biology, chemistry, uh, and so on. But also computer science, just as I explained um, a minute ago, it is very closely related to mathematics. And all areas of engineering uh, involve uh, mathematics. They use mathematics quite uh, extensively. Uh, but also economics, uh, healthcare in general, medical sciences, uh, and so on, because it's related to biology. Uh, this all use uh, mathematics. Communication use mathematics. Entertainment use mathematics. Um, so mathematics is, is everywhere, even if we don't see it on the surface, but it's, um, it's, um, it's at the foundation, at the uh, where we can maybe see it immediately, but is still there. Mathematics is there everywhere. Um, in general, mathematics can be used to improve life, um, and it has been used to improve our life. Uh, so to um, arrive at this stage of history, uh, in this modern way of life, uh, mathematics has played a, a really important role to uh, bring us to this point. Um, but we can do even more. We can do. We can use even more advanced mathematics to improve our life, uh, whether that's from a, a health point of view or from just uh, making things more efficient. Or, for example, uh, solving problems like um, climate change and so on. We can use mathematics. There is still a lot of potential uh, for using mathematics to improve our life and to, uh, for example, take care of the environment of the planet and so on. Uh, however, unfortunately, mathematics is also used sometimes uh, in the wrong way. It also is misused. And that's not uh, a fault of mathematics itself, but it just depends on how we use uh, mathematics. So, so if we can, if we think of it as a tool, uh, then it depends how we use it. We can use it for good or we can use it for bad. For example, mathematics is also used in uh, wars uh, when thousands and millions of people die. Unfortunately, mathematics is also used there. And I'm not just talking about elementary mathematics, but sophisticated, advanced uh, mathematics. Um, so unfortunately, that's how it is. But as far as I know, uh, almost all mathematicians uh, don't really like their mathematics to be used for, for bad. They like it to be used for 
good for improving our lives, not for dis destruction. Now, most people learn mathematics, of course, in school, from primary school, but almost everyone goes up to high school and then after that they don't study mathematics anymore. Uh, only a small minority that goes into uh, science and engineering uh, will continue to, to learn some uh, mathematics. Uh, but otherwise, most of the population, most of the population of the world uh, learn mathematics only up to a certain uh, elementary level. Um, so this, uh, of course, this is good, the fact that people learn mathematics, but the fact that they don't go enough uh, to advance mathematics, that also can create uh, difficulties. It can create misunderstanding. Uh, one, of, one of the difficulties is that it's hard for people like me and general for mathematicians to, to explain to people what we are doing, because uh, the more advanced mathematics gets, the more um, abstract it becomes, and uh, the more technical background you need to understand it. Uh, so it becomes harder and harder to explain that mathematics to uh, people who are not ex experts. And that uh, creates mi misunderstandings. For example, I have heard uh, over the years uh, from many people saying that, uh, why are you still doing mathematics? Because there is nothing more to be discovered. So is uh, mathematics, everything in mathematics has been worked out and why do we need mathematicians? <laughs> but that's not uh, true. It's very far from being true. Uh, it's mathematics grows and the more problems we solve in mathematics, the more new problems appear. Uh, that's just the nature of mathematics. It just evolves, it becomes, it expands, it never it shrinks. Um, so now today, for example, there are more mathematical problems to be solved compared to 100 years uh, ago. And 100 years ago, there were more problems compared to 300 years ago. So it's just how mathematics uh, evolves. So the, uh, the more progress we make, the more new uh, problems we also discover to be solved. So mathematics is not going to be uh, to, to end anytime uh, soon. Um, and another thing, misunderstanding that uh, people sometimes get is that mathematicians are lonely people and maybe even not very normal, maybe uh, they are maybe strange, strange and so on. But uh, again, that's not really true. It's just a misunderstanding. Uh, and that mi misunderstanding is created by the fact that we can't tell people what we are doing exactly. And uh, so we may be uh, seen as people who are doing uh, Thing. But that, that's not uh, really true because the, the problem that we are working on, uh, so either is is abstract and something uh, we have some good reason to think about those problems. I will come uh, back to this, or we try to solve this problem to apply to a uh, real world uh, um, problem to solve uh, something that the humankind uh, faces. So I think uh, I hope that the society um, shows some gratitude towards mathematicians because we work hard and we maybe don't get enough recognition. Um, now, in general, mathematics can contribute to solution of many problems, to almost any problem that the humankind faces. For example, uh, healthcare. How do we make a health system in a country more efficient? Uh, you can use uh, statistics, you can use um, uh, several different kinds of mathematics to uh, make a, a system more efficient, like a health system, or for example, a transport system, uh, or how to uh, solve the climate issue. Mathematics is always there. We need mathematics to understand the problem and also to solve the problem. So that's uh, well understood. Uh, now to apply mathematics, we need to translate these problems into mathematics. We need to make a mathematical model uh, to be able to think about, to apply mathematics to a problem. You have to first formulate it in terms of uh, the language of mathematics. And that usually means you, you take some parameters from your setting, from your problem, and then you assign a mathematical abstract, mathematical concepts to these parameters, and then try to 
uh, formulate the, the issue, the main issue there as an abstract mathematical problem and then think about this uh, mathematical problem. More generally, if we even just ignore the problems of, of human society, more generally we can use mathematics and mathematics has been used to understand nature, to understand the world uh, around us. Uh, so to make sense of, uh, for example, uh, stars, galaxies, uh, planets, and so on, we need mathematics, even if they are not uh, immediately maybe relevant to the human society, but uh, we just have a desire for understanding the world around us, and mathematics is at, at the very heart of this, uh, of this pursuit. Um, even we can say that mathematics can be used to unlock the mysteries of life itself. I mean, we ask this question, what is life and how uh, living beings uh, survive? How, for example, an animal can survive? How its uh, body works? How the cells in its body work? This all, um, understanding all these things involves uh, many sciences, but including also mathematics. Mathematics can be used uh, to understand life itself. So that's why I, uh, Take this title that life is math. To understand life, you need mathematics. You can formulate it at least uh, some aspects of life in terms of mathematics. Um, now, one example that is very relevant uh, to today is the coronavirus uh, pandemic. It has affected the lives of billions of people around uh, the world. Uh, many, many people have died, of course, as we know and uh, its uh, effect goes beyond the number of people who have died. Uh, a large number of people have lost their jobs because um, the pandemic has forced many countries to impose uh, severe restrictions on businesses and on shops and so on, and that means many people can't work as before. Uh, even if they can work, they, their working habits have to change because they can't work in the same uh, normal way that they, uh, they did before. And all this can create, for example, a uh, mental problem for, for many people. So the pandemic has affected people's, people's lives in so many different ways. Now, to understand the pandemic, to understand how the virus spreads, to understand how our countries should respond, how they should impose restrictions, when they should do this thing, to what extent, and so on. This all involves mathematics, because uh, just the pandemic itself can be formulated in terms of uh, a mathematical model. So I show you this picture here. I'm not giving into the details, but you see that this is a, a model or a couple of models of uh, a pandemic in general. It, can apply to any other uh, virus, not just the coronavirus. And you see that this is a set of differential equations. It's not a uh, quite elementary kind of mathematics. Maybe we don't see exactly these things in high school, but still it's not a very advanced kind of mathematics, uh, the formula that we see, but still it's mathematics. And to understand uh, the pandemic, which affects lives of billions of people, you apply mathematics. And you see that some countries have been uh, very successful in uh, controlling the, the virus, the spread of the virus. And that's probably because they understand, uh, they have a, a better policy, maybe a better formula to how to respond. And that formula has to be based on mathematics. Now that naturally brings us to applied mathematics. In general, one can divide mathematics into two uh, parts. Although maybe a little bit superficially, but uh, we have applied mathematics on one side and we have pure mathematics on the other side. Now in general, applied mathematics is uh, driven by specific applications in mind. And by this, I mean that you have uh, a problem in maybe a society kind of problem or uh, there is uh, phenomena in nature that you want to understand uh, and you formulate it as a mathematical model and then you want to understand uh, this phenomena, you want to, uh, for example, understand what, how it uh, behaves, you observe it and its behavior, you can interpret it in terms of uh, your model and even more importantly, you want to 
predict what happens in the future. So that's the power of mathematics. It's not just understanding, but also predicting. Uh, so generally, this is the area of, uh, of applied mathematics. So you can, for example, use uh, mathematics to understand the human brain. You, you make a mathematical model and then you understand how the human brain works and maybe also predict uh, its behavior and so on. So it can be simply about understanding a, a galaxy that is millions of light years away. And so that all is, is using the kind of mathematics that we call applied mathematics. Uh, so it can be applied uh, anyway in science and engineering, economics, and, and so on. Now, all these making models and thinking about your problem in abstract terms can lead to new mathematical problems and can even create new theories, mathematical theories. Um, so mathematicians at that point may simply think about this model, this problem from a purely abstract point of view and even forget about this origin, uh, forget about where it came from and just think about it as a mathematical problem. So in that case, this naturally <clears throat> takes this problem into the area of pure mathematics, where pure mathematics is then, um, uh, is an area of mathematics that you think in abstract mathematical terms and not necessarily just thinking about the applications. Uh, so that then naturally brings us to a pure side of mathematics. So the other half of mathematics, which is pure mathematics. And that's the reason I picked part of the title of my talk of saying math, mathematics is life. Uh, pure mathematical research is driven primarily by curiosity or applications inside mathematics. So this is the more intellectual and artistic side of mathematics. We can think of um, a mathematical problem just for its own sake, not necessarily because it's, it, it, it is being applied to some uh, real world problem. That's not really the, the concern. So someone like me, uh, when I do mathematics, I don't think about applications. That's just not uh, my um, my job, basically. That's someone else's job is to apply uh, mathematical theories to real world um, problems. It just, uh, the, our main concern is to think about mathematical structures from an abstract point of view and from an intellectual point of view, uh, not because of its applications. But I will mention later that applications usually come later, even if you uh, don't think about it. So this thinking in t in about mathematics in abstract terms, it can lead you to new ideas. It can lead uh, naturally to more uh, new uh, phenomena in mathematics and to new problems to be solved. Uh, so the more progress we make, the more ideas we get, the more problems also uh, get formulated in the process. Um, now, all these things doing uh, mathematics can take time. So some problems may take you weeks to solve, some may take months, and some may take years or even uh, decades. Uh, so one has to be patient with uh, mathematics uh, because you may not be able to see a result immediately. It takes time to actually solve problems, especially very hard problems. And creativity is one of the most important aspects of doing pure mathematics. Just maybe this is a bit similar to arts, where creativity is also important. The originality and creating something new is important. In, in the same way, in, in pure mathematics, this creativity is really an important factor of being um, a pure mathematician. Now, in general, even the most abstract theories in mathematics they do, maybe not all, always, but quite often they find applications to real world problems. So even if they, if people develop the, these theories just for, from a, a purely abstract point of view, and they didn't think about applications, but sometimes they just find applications in, in nature. So for example, uh, elliptic curves, which are objects uh, in, uh, in algebraic geometry, an area of pure mathematics, uh, 
Um, they were invented for reasons that, that may be not uh, related to any application immediately, but they have been studied from just purely mathematical point of view. And in the end, people realize that you can use uh, these objects, these uh, spaces in cryptography. So cryptography is about making uh, computer communication, digital communications secure. And you can use uh, something that people develop for a completely different reason. You can use it in cryptography. Um, another example is of derived categories. So it's, uh, I'm not going to talk about them, what they are, but there are some very abstract kind of mathematical structures that are abstract even for pure mathematicians. And they found applications in mathematical physics, although they were originally developed for completely different reasons, not related to physics, but people realized that they are actually related to physics, for example, to uh, string theory. Now, then you come to this question, especially if you are not a mathematician, you, you could ask, so why do we do mathematics if even if we don't think about it in terms of uh, applications? Why do we do uh, pure mathematics? Uh, well, pure mathematics gives life in the sense that I will talk about now. First of all, mathematics has many great, many interesting characteristics. One of these characteristics is that mathematics is very precise, unlike any other science, really, any other uh, part of knowledge. So if you go outside mathematics, even if you just move to physics, you see that physics is, of course, precise, but um, the kind of pre precision that we see in mathematics, you just don't see it in, in any other uh, area, in, in any other uh, science. So mathematics is really very precise. There is nothing to argue about. So either something is correct and people verify that it's correct or it's not correct and people can verify it. They can tell you why it is not correct. Uh, so there usually is very, very rare to have arguments. And even if there are arguments, it's not exactly about the mathematics itself, but the people uh, involved. Another characteristic of mathematics is that it's immortal. Uh, it's the fact that if you prove something in mathematics, then it stays there forever. It's not going to change a hundred years later. Now, if you compare that with, uh, for example, computer science, uh, you have some kind of uh, software now, you have some kind of coding language. Uh, 20 years later, the whole thing may be completely uh, different. Uh, even if the original code were correct, but still people might may forget about them and just work with uh, something which is completely new. But that's not the way mathematics works. Uh, mathematics uh, works in, in the way that something that people did before is still being used today. So we are just building things on top of each other and it just grows. And that's one reason why mathematics is so vast. And also if you compare it with physics, for example, you can have a theory and now, and then 50 years later, people may say, well, this theory was not quite correct. Now we need a, a new kind of theory, a more precise one, maybe. Uh, but that's not the case in mathematics. So mathematics, as I said, you do something, it will stay there forever, unless there is something wrong with it, there is some mistake. So these are the kind of things that people uh, like. Um, but on the other hand, people have, uh, mathematics also has an artistic kind of side to it. Uh, it's beautiful in, the, in its own sense. Uh, there is an abstract beauty to mathematical structures. It's not something that maybe we can see by our eyes. It's not always visual, although sometimes you can make it visual, but um, usually the, the beauty is, is abstract and it's not something that we can just show it to people. Um, so again, that's related to uh, the remarks I was making before that we can't easily communicate with, with people because we can't easily show this beauty to people. To see the beauty, you need, um, you need to learn a whole language. You need to learn uh, an area, an advanced area of mathematics, and that is not so uh, easy. But there is a beauty in mathematics. There is an inner uh, abstract beauty in mathematics. So when I think about uh, mathematics, when I read something that other people uh, did, I, at some point I say, wow, that is really uh, beautiful. 
people have uh, some idea that I just didn't think about before, but um, I find that idea in that context very uh, beautiful. Um, another aspect of mathematics is that it's the universal. It's not restricted to any culture. It's not like literature that is uh, tied to a specific language or music that's tied to a specific um, culture. But mathematics is universal. Uh, it can adapt to any um, any culture in, in the world, and it has adapted to many different cultures around the world uh, during the history. So just uh, um, if you think about the Egyptians, the Mesopotamians, and then the Greeks, and the Muslim world, and then uh, the Western and Europeans, and so on, um, you see that mathematics appears, uh, Chinese, Indian, in many different parts of the world, in many different cultures. And that's just because mathematics is universal. It can be understood by any culture, by any society. Uh, so that, that's also important. It's like a common language for, for humankind. And on the other hand, mathematics is something that's very challenging. And someone like me or many other people, they like something that's challenging. It's, com it's maybe similar to, for example, sport, that people play sport because it's challenging and they just like the, the challenge. There is also challenge in mathematics. In general, doing mathematics is very exciting and that's what uh, I like about mathematics. So you can say that mathematics makes life more enjoyable, although that may not make sense to many people because many people maybe they don't learn mathematics in the right way and they start to dislike mathematics. But if you approach it in the right way, if you learn it in the right way, and if you progress in the right way, then it can actually make life more enjoyable. It can make life even more meaningful. It can give meaning to, uh, to, to the life of many people like, like me. Uh, so mathematics, you could say, is life, is the way of life for thousands of people. And if you go throughout history for tens of thousands of people, uh, of, of brilliant people. So that's why I picked part of the title of my talk saying that mathematics is life. Mathematics gives really meaning to life to many people. Um, another important as aspect of being a mathematician, in general being a scientist, is that you belong as to a certain community, a community of mathematicians that we all think about. Uh, we all use a common language and think about uh, theories about problems that in a way is, is similar. So that creates a community, a, a worldwide community, not just a specific to uh, any country or culture. And that can be uh, in the long term, uh, that's important for the individuals, of course, that we feel that we belong to a community. That's something that uh, we people, we humans uh, need. But on the other hand, this can help uh, peace around the world if it is uh, used in a smart way. For example, uh, a few days ago, I attended a meeting for African countries uh, about uh, mathematics and related subjects and you could see that people coming from many different parts of Africa could unite and could um, they could be friends they could forget about the political and geographic boundaries and they can come all together uh, in one place even if it is uh, virtual and that I think is good for making peace uh, so these people who come to do mathematics together will not in the future be ready to fight against each other because they know it, each other. They know that they are all human and they are all similar. Um, now in the rest of the talk, I'll say also a few words about uh, mathematics and computers. Uh, now, most research in mathematics, as far as I know, is done by pen and paper. And that's definitely the case in my case and people around me that I, I know that. Uh, but we use computers, for example, to calculate uh, examples or to verify special cases of a problem that is that involves too much calculations. We can use computers for those. Although I myself even very rarely do use mathematics, use computers to even calculate examples and so on. Uh, but there are people who who do it. Now the question is whether computers can do high-level, sophisticated mathematical research or not. 
Well, as far as I know, at this point, no, they can't. But there isn't much reason to say, to think that they will not be able to do it in the next, I don't know, 500 years. I just don't have any reason why computers should not be able to do the kind of mathematics that I do now in 300 years or 500 years. By that time, we computers can have enough, um, maybe have developed enough so that they can even think about sophisticated uh, mathematics. Um, but in the long term, maybe a combination of human and computers uh, will work the best. I mean, there are already people who use computers extensively in their mathematical research. Um, so there is an interaction between the human and the computer. The human does some part of the research, the computers are, do some other part of the research. And I don't know, maybe in the long term, that's uh, how we can do. Maybe we will write a paper, me with a computer or someone like me together with a computer. The human maybe can do some part of the research better, the computer can do another part better, and then they can collaborate, for example. Uh, but in recent years, we have seen that artificial intelligence has expanded a lot uh, because compute, computing power has increased a lot. Uh, now, the basic idea behind AI, artificial intel intelligence, is to mimic the human brain. The way that the human brain works, we try to mimic that. Um, now, the underlying working principles are all based on mathematics. So if you go deeper and see why, how AI works, um, you see that it's all written down in terms of mathematical, in terms of some mathematical functions uh, and so on. So mathematics is there all the time. So you could say maybe that mathematics gives life to the computer. Although at the moment this is very limited, but in the future of course it will expand and maybe really we will have robots that just behave and think like uh, humans. I mean, we, we probably come to that point as, uh, as sometime in the future. Uh, okay, in the final uh, minute, I will uh, tell you a little bit about funding. This is another aspect of uh, doing mathematics. Um, so to do science in general, you need funding, you need some uh, financial support to, to run an organization, for example, a university or a mathematical department or whatever. So we also need money and the same is true for also for mathematics. Uh, however, the good news is that funding for mathematics is actually usually the required funding is small compared to other sciences, for example, physics or biology. And the reason for that is that because most mathematical re research doesn't need la laboratories. So unless you do something which involves a heavy computations for which you need some power for computers, then you don't really need much equipment. I mean, you can use computers just for communication or to write articles uh, and maybe calculate some um, examples, not very heavy uh, computationally, um, but otherwise you don't need much equipment. Uh, because much of the mathematics we do, it's still going on in the head, as I said, by we use pen and paper. Um, so that, that's the good news. We don't need really huge uh, amount of money. But for example, if you want to support a, a laboratory in physics or biology, you need very expensive equipment. Uh, usually for mathematical research, you don't need that kind of thing. Um, the funding is mainly used for human resources. For example, to hire people, uh, professors to do mathematics, to teach mathematics, uh, or to hire research assistants, or to hire PhD students. You can give a scholarship to students uh, to come to your university. And for that, you need money uh, also for organizing conferences, seminars, for traveling, and so on. There is some money involved, but again, this is um, not huge. So the very last point I want to make is that it's important to give funding to mathematics, uh, not, not assume that mathematics doesn't need any money. Mathematics still needs money, it still needs uh, funding. If you don't have enough funding for scholarships, you can't get maybe very good students. If you don't have enough money for hiring research assistants, then uh, your department is going to suffer in the long uh, term uh, and so on. So it's important to give funding and not to assume that the mathematics doesn't need any funding. Uh, okay, thank you for uh, watching.
Hello, everyone. Hello again. Um, let me just, um, we had a, a number of questions during Professor Birka's talk, and let me just um, start with the first one. So, um, Carmen Cabrera asked um, uh, Professor Birka, you mentioned that mathematicians' work is not always appreciated uh, by people because they don't have enough technical understanding. Um, but uh, she would like to know more about your work and why you love it. Um, so what's the goal of algebraic geometry? Um, what sort of mathematical object do you study? And how does that differ from, say, just geometry? Um, and finally, what keeps you motivated to work on this topic? Yes. Um... So there are too many questions here. Uh, obviously, I can't answer all of them. Uh, but uh, for example, let's say, uh, what, what is the goal of algebraic geometry? Um, so in very short term, I can say that uh, algebraic geometry is basically defined, it's a field of mathematics which is defined by polynomial equations. So oh, most fields of mathematics, especially geometries, uh, each one is defined by a certain class of functions. For example, if you uh, look at continuous functions on spaces, you usually do uh, topology. Uh, if you do differentiable functions, then you do differential geometry. But uh, algebraic geometry has to do with polynomial functions. It's more something algebraic. Uh, so the goal of the field is uh, we have spaces that are defined by polynomial equations. We want to understand these spaces as much as we can. Uh, ideally to classify them, to put them into different groups according to their characteristic. So that's the main goal, but it then naturally is related to many other parts of mathematics, to outside mathematics, like uh, mathematical physics, economics, um, uh, some part of engineering and, and so on. Um, so the point here is that um, when you go higher into mathematics, then the language becomes more technical, it becomes uh, more abstract, and then uh, obviously most people don't study this language. And so it diff becomes difficult for us to explain exactly what we are uh, doing, what uh, the goal of our research is. Uh, so this is quite different from, let's say, biology or medicine. I mean, you can, even if it, medicine itself becomes abstract at some point, but it's much easier to tell people that you are trying to find a vaccine for a, vaccine for a certain disease. You don't have to go into the, the smaller technical details. But, but for mathematics, that's difficult because even defining the goal itself uh, has to be technical. There is just no uh, other ways. I mean, there are many reasons why uh, there are these difficulties of communication. Um, but that's one of the reasons, it's just the language, the background. Um, I have the, another way. question, and it uh, touches what we've discussed before uh, this um, uh, before we were online. So Simone Adams asks, uh, hang on, um, do you think mathematics is simply a human tool um, or something that ex exists independent of human mind? Um, I think maybe partly, part of it exists maybe independent of the human mind, like the natural numbers, like you have one thing, one uh, planet, two planets, three, maybe this uh, exists, you could say, independent of the human mind. Uh, but I think uh, otherwise a lot of mathematics is built by the human brain, is an ap approximation of nature, you could say. Uh, just take the example of, of a circle, I mean you don't find okay. many circles in nature. You, you find many examples of objects of uh, stuff that look like a circle, but they are not like 100% a circle. I mean, you just take, I don't know, any circular object. If you put it under a microscope, you don't so, see a circle anymore. It just I, changes. So I think it has to do with Unfortunately, I have to stop you here. Uh, we have already run out of time. Um, uh, Professor Birka, thank you very much for a delivering an inspiring talk and also for um, sharing your views um, on, on some interesting questions. Um, with that, I would like to end 
um, this part of the GIST meeting and um, say goodbye to all the listeners. Okay, thank you. It was a pleasure to be here and uh, apologies to the, the people who asked many questions, but as you see, there is no time to answer them. <laughs>